Hi everyone, I'm Russ Still with Gold Seal. I'm going to guess that one of the most important topics for remote pilots and probably the most hotly debated are airspace authorizations. They are also the most commonly misunderstood. If you follow the Facebook groups and drone message forums, you've seen good information and bad information. The trick is to know which is which. When it boils right down to it, the most fundamental issues covered on the written test are aimed at understanding where you can legally fly and where you can't. So, understanding airspaces and authorizations will help you pass your test. And after you pass and are flying commercially, it's critical that you know where and when an airspace authorization is needed. Most people understand that Part 107 regulations spell out where airspace authorizations are required. That's covered in Part 107.41. It tells us that permission, now known as an authorization, is required to operate in Class B, C, D, and Class E surface areas associated with airports. The big debate and misunderstanding focuses squarely on this issue of Class E airspace. Let's take a look. First, to start out, let's do a quick review of Class E airspace and the requirements for airspace authorizations. As you can see here, Class G airspace starts at the surface and extends upwards until it bumps against another airspace class, in this case, Class E starting at 1200 feet AGL. Class G is uncontrolled airspace, and Class E is controlled airspace. If you're a Gold Seal Ground School member, this is old news for you. Now in some places, usually around airports, the Class E dips down and starts at 700 feet. These are called transition areas, but you really don't have to know that. The third type of Class E is called Class E surface area. This is where there is no Class G at all, because the Class E actually starts at the surface. Now here's where the regulations kick in. Part 107.41 states, no person may operate a small unmanned aircraft in Class B, Class C, or Class D airspace, or within the lateral boundaries of the surface area of Class E airspace designated for an airport unless that person has prior authorization from air traffic control. It's right there. You must have authorization to operate in Class E starting at the surface. There's no mention of Class E airspace, and since the surface area is explicitly stated, no reason to believe that non-surface areas are included. The common argument is that the regulations state that a remote pilot must have authorization to operate in controlled airspace, but this is false. In fact, in the published Part 107 regulations, nowhere do the words controlled airspace even exist. This all comes into play in the case of tower inspections. Part 107.51 explains that you may fly higher than 400 feet if you remain within 400 feet of a tower or structure. As long as you remain within this 400 foot radius, you may climb up to 400 feet above the top of the tower, unless that puts you in an airspace requiring authorization. So, a tower that was 1,000 feet high could be inspected by UAS assuming that the top was in Class E. The Class E in this example is not a surface area, so no authorization is required. Let's take a look at a case study involving a tower near the Williston Airport in Central Florida. Here we've got a blow up of the Central Florida sectional. We have the Williston Airport right here, and to give you a frame of reference, uh, Gainesville, Florida is right up here to the northeast, and Ocala is down this way. And one of my favorite private strips is on the chart too, it's right here, it's the, the reluctant gremlin. I think I'd like to ask him if I can pay a visit one day. Uh, the Williston Airport is Class G. The Class G goes from the surface up to 700 feet where it becomes Class E. Now we know this because of the shaded magenta outline around the airspace. This lets us know that the Class E starts at 700 feet. Outside of that outline, we have Class E starting at 1,200 feet. Now the tower in question is right here. Let's take a close-up look at it. This tower is clearly outside of the magenta outline, so we know that it lives in Class G, with Class E starting above it at 1,200 feet AGL. Now this example has appeared elsewhere, and that's specifically why we picked it. Here's your question. You are planning an aerial inspection of this tower with your quadcopter. You know that you can fly above it as long as you stay within a 400 foot radius. The top of the tower is 889 feet AGL, or in terms of MSL, it's 1,048 feet above sea level. So, how high may you legally fly above it under Part 107? The answer that was originally given was 1,200 feet. The logic was that you could fly your unmanned aircraft up to 400 feet higher than the top of the tower, but because that put the aircraft in Class E airspace, you could go no higher without an airspace authorization. Clearly, not the right answer. It's perfectly fine to fly in Class E as long as it's not a Class E surface area associated within the lateral boundaries of an airport. The tower is 889 feet tall, add 400 to that, and you get 1,289 feet. That's the correct answer. 
It's inside of Class E, but that's just fine. No authorization needed. Okay, there you have it. The mysteries of Class E authorizations resolved. Just remember, it's not an issue of controlled versus uncontrolled airspace. All of Class E is controlled. The only Class E that requires an authorization is airspace within the lateral boundaries of a Class E surface area associated with an airport. Class E surface extensions aren't included. You may fly in them without authorization, just as you would in Class G. Just be aware that the extensions exist for a reason. They outline areas around airports where manned aircraft may be flying approaches and departures. Thanks for spending a few minutes with us today. If you're prepping for your Part 107 FAA exam or know someone who is, send them to Gold Seal UAV Ground School. Good flying.